Hello everyone. In this video, we will learn the basics of creating responsive web layouts using the popular framework Bootstrap. Here's a quick review of what we'll cover. We'll learn how to create a responsive navigation that sits horizontally for larger devices and screens. But once we get down to something like a smartphone factor, we can see that we have to tap or click a menu icon and that reveals the navigation. We will also learn how to assign different column layouts for different content depending on the size of the device or viewport. So for example, maybe on a large desktop screen we want four items per row. Maybe on a smaller desktop screen we only want three items per row. Maybe on a tablet we want two per row. And maybe on a smartphone we only want one per row. And finally, we'll also review how to show and hide specific content depending on the size of the viewport or the device. So for example, we can see that because my browser window is large, we see something down here that reads large. Only large viewports and devices can see this. If I make my screen a little bit smaller, now it says medium. Only medium viewports and devices can see this. So on and so forth. So now it says small, and now it says extra small. And then we also see something that says hidden large. Every size except large can see this. So then obviously, that is visible until my screen is large and then it's not visible. So that's a quick review of what we'll cover in this video. Now it's time to get started, so let's dive right in. So behind the scenes, I just deleted all of the code that was creating the responsive demo page because looking at a finished product isn't very helpful or educational. So we're gonna rewrite all of that code together to help you learn. Now if you perform a web search for Bootstrap, you should be able to find the official page. And if you click on the Getting Started page and scroll down a bit, you should be able to find something called Basic Template, which is code that you can copy and paste. So currently, all that I have is the Basic Template code. I've pasted that in, and now we're going to start customizing it together. Now I should mention very quickly that this is a tutorial regarding responsive layouts, not package management. So that means that I'm assuming you already have the bootstrap files at your disposal. Now whether that's through the command line or a gem or some sort of package manager, or whether that's just a traditional downloaded zip file, it's fine. Now if that last part went over your head or if you're a little bit confused, that's okay. Just go to the official bootstrap website and download the compiled bootstrap files. It will be in the format of a zip file, and that's a great place to get started if you're just getting your feet wet with Bootstrap. Okay, so now that that public service announcement is out of the way, and everyone watching this video is on the same page, let's get started. So let's give ourselves a goal. Our first goal will be to create two columns for every screen size and device under the sun. So we'll create a div, we'll give it a class of container, and then within that div, we'll create another one with a class of row. Now within this class of row, we can create divs that set up the columns. So I'll create a div with a class of call for column, xs for extra small, and then six. Now, <laughs> this class name might seem cryptic or mysterious, or you might be wondering how I came up with this name, and that's fine. If you're new to Bootstrap, I would expect that would be the natural response. Uh, but I will explain this class name in just a moment. So let's include a little bit of sample content uh, within this column. So we'll create a paragraph. I'll include just a little bit of lorem ipsum dummy text. And then because we wanted two columns, I'll copy and paste this so there's two of them. So now we see that if I refresh, we have two columns. And no matter what screen size or device we were using, uh, even down to a smartphone form factor, we still have two columns. Now let's review the class name that we used to create the two column layout. So you'll remember that call stands for column, XS stands for extra small, but I want you to ignore this for another 30 seconds and then I'll circle back around to the extra small. But moving on, we also included six. Now Bootstrap has a grid that spans 12 columns. So usually you want things to add up to 12. So if we wanted two columns, that means each column should take up half of the available space. And half of 12 is six. So that's why we chose six. Now let's circle back around to the XS for extra small. This isn't saying that the column should be extra small. This is instead referring to the size of the browser window or the size of the device that is currently viewing the page. So altogether, this class is essentially saying, if the viewport that is currently viewing the page is extra small, 
what we typically associate with a smartphone. If it's extra small or larger, make it a column that spans half of the available width. Now the key phrase of that sentence I just uttered is or larger. So we said if it's extra small or larger. This means that Bootstrap is a mobile first framework. So that means the mobile or the extra small level is sort of our foundation and then we build out from there to support larger screens. Or you can think of it as the extra small is sort of the default. Now let's move on to a different example. So you'll remember that our first goal was to create two columns on every device and screen size under the sun. Well, our next goal will be to create two elements and at the mobile level, we want them to sit one per row. So they just sit vertically on top of each other. But on something like a tablet, we still want two columns. Or actually I should say, but a tablet or anything larger, we still want two columns. So I'll create a new row and we'll create a few new columns. So this will say call small, not extra small, but small six. Okay, and then we just want the same thing, just a little bit of, oops, uh, lower mipsum. Two of them because we wanted two. Okay, so now if I refresh, you can see that when we're at the smartphone level, they sit on top of each other, single column. But once we get to the tablet size, you can see that the two column layout is in place again. Now I think it's helpful to think of this two letter size abbreviation as a greater than or equal to evaluator. So we're saying if the size of the viewport is greater than or equal to this size, follow this command of taking up however much width we specify. So there are other sizes at our disposal. So, so far we've seen extra small and small, which correspond with smartphones and tablets. There's also MD, which stands for medium and corresponds with a medium sized desktop monitor or your average size laptop. So if I refresh now, you can see that this command is being ignored at the tablet or the small level and it won't be acknowledged until we get to the medium level. And we could take things a step further. Instead of MD, I could change this to LG for large. So now if we refresh, we can see that this command to take up half of the available width is being ignored even at the medium size. And I have to make my browser window quite large for it to be followed. All right, so now that we understand how these classes work and we understand that things begin at the extra small level and flow upwards, let's create something a bit more interesting. Let's create a box that sits here. And at the large size, we want four of those per row. Uh, and then once we get to a smaller screen, we only want three per row. And then when we get to about this size, we want two per row. And then the smartphone size, we only want one per row. So I'm gonna show you how we can combine multiple classes on a single element to achieve just that. So let's scroll down a bit in our HTML and we'll create a new row. Okay, and I'll create a div with a class of column small six. That's it for now. We'll add more classes here in just a moment, but let's set up the box style. So in Bootstrap, there's a class named Panel. And if we follow a certain structure and class naming system, uh, Bootstrap will automatically create nice amounts of padding and borders for us. So then we'll create another div inside this one named Panel Body. And then we can include a bit of dummy text inside here. Okay, so if we refresh, you can see that there is our box. Now let's discuss the classes that we will use uh, to create the different columns. So you'll notice that I didn't create any sort of class with the XS extra small abbreviation because at the mobile level, we simply want one per row. And all we need to do to achieve that is simply not include an extra small class. So at the small level, which again is what we associate with the tablet, we want the column to take up half of the available space. And then once we get to the medium size, we want it to take up a third of the available space. So we'll say column MD for medium. Obviously a third of 12 is four. So now if I refresh, you can see that it's taking up a third of the space. And then once we get to the large size, we want it to take up a quarter of the space. So we'll say column large, 
obviously a quarter of 12 is three. So if I refresh, you can see that it's now taken up a quarter of the space. So now all we need to do is duplicate this, copy and paste it several times. And you'll see that we have a grid in place. So large screens get four per row, medium screens get three, tablets get two, and smartphones collapse to a nice single column layout. So you can see the power of combining multiple column classes on a single element. Now for now, I believe that's enough for columns. If you wanna learn more, head over to the Bootstrap documentation. Uh, you can do all sorts of things. You can create extra offsets or margin from certain columns, and you can use these size abbreviations to only add those offsets or margins at certain viewport sizes. You can do a lot of neat things. But for the scope of this video, we're gonna move on from columns. And now let's talk about how to add in uh, the responsive navigation that sat at the top of the page uh, when you first loaded this video. So when we talk about adding a navigation, nine times out of 10, it's as simple as beginning with an unordered list with links. So at the top of our HTML, I'm simply gonna create an unordered list with a list item. And let's create a few sample links. Link one, just include a few. All right, now if we refresh the page, we'll see quite literally an unordered list with bullets and links, and that's obviously not what we want. So to make this look like a navigation, we just need to add a few classes so that the Bootstrap framework will do the heavy lifting. Okay, so let's begin by adding a few classes to the UL unordered list element. Class, nav, navbar nav, and then we'll wrap that unordered list in a div with a class of navbar. So I'll just cut and paste it into here. So now if we refresh, we can see something that's starting to look like a navigation. Now that we have the navigation itself working, let's worry about the surrounding elements. So you'll remember that we want it inside a larger gray box that also houses perhaps the title of the site. So what we'll do is we'll wrap this nav bar inside a parent nav bar. So let me cut and paste this into this parent nav bar. And then towards the beginning of this parent nav bar inside the code, we'll create a new div named nav bar header. And this is where we can include two things, the name of our site and also the menu button that we click or tap uh, to reveal the navigation once we get down to a smartphone size. So the first thing we'll do is add the name of the site. So I'll create a span with a class of navbar brand and I'll just say responsive demo. So if I refresh, you can see that we now have this gray box with the title. So the basics are in place, but now we need to add the code that makes it responsive because currently if I resize my window to that of a smartphone, you can see that things are not looking great. So let's focus on two things. Number one, we wanna hide the links at the smartphone level until the user taps or clicks some sort of an icon to reveal them. And then obviously next, we'll add the icon that you actually tap or click. So number one is to temporarily hide the links. So all we need to do to achieve that is add a different class to this navbar. So we'll say navbar collapse, and by default, we want it collapsed. So that means it won't show initially. So now if I refresh, you can see that at the mobile level, we don't see the links, but at a traditional size desktop or laptop, or even a tablet, you do see the links. Okay, our next bit of business will be to add in that menu icon that you tap or click on a smartphone that reveals the navigation links. So within this navbar header div, we'll create a button type equals button, class equals navbar toggle, data toggle equals collapse. So this is saying, if you click this, what do we wanna toggle? The collapse behavior. And then we'll say, well, what do we want this collapse behavior to run on? We want it to run on a certain element. We want it to run on this element, this navbar that's currently collapsed. So we'll say data target, equals, and then this is where you can include a CSS-like selector. So because this element has a class of navbar collapse, we simply include a period to indicate a class, and then we say navbar collapse. 
Okay, so now if we save and refresh, you can see that there is a button. It, <laughs> it has a border, nothing inside it, because obviously we didn't include anything inside uh, these button tags. But if I click this, it slides down the navigation. And if I click it again, it hides the navigation. So now it's up to you to include something inside this button so it's not empty. So let's include one of the most popular uh, button contents. It's simply to include some sort of text that will read for screen reading devices. So we'll say span class screen reader only. So if a device is not a screen reader, you will not see this text. This is only for accessibility reasons, but we'll say toggle the navigation. Now for all other devices, we can include a pretty graphic. So let's include something that looks like a menu icon. So we'll say span class icon bar. And we want three of these to look like a standard menu icon. So now if we refresh, you can see we have that typical menu icon and it works perfectly. And if we were viewing this on a larger device, we simply don't need that menu toggle icon. We can just display the links horizontally. So to review, we now have a fully functioning responsive navigation. We also learned a lot about how columns work. The final chapter of this video will be learning how to hide and display specific content at specific screen sizes. So for example, let's imagine you have a long bit of text somewhere on your website. So let's add to this text. Let's see. Well, maybe it makes sense to show this much text on a large screen, but once we get down to something like a smartphone, you probably don't want this much text. So what if we only want to hide that content on a smartphone? Well, we can select this row and we can say hidden for extra small devices. So now if I refresh, you can see this content is still here, but once we get down to a smartphone, it's gone. And this class name of hidden hyphen and then a size abbreviation works with all of the other sizes as well. So small, medium, and large. So if you only want something to be hidden at one size but display at every other size, you can use hidden. Now conversely, you can say visible and then a size. So for example, down here, let's say we wanted an extra paragraph uh, in, these two, in these two sections that was only visible for a certain size. So we could say, uh, this text should only be viewed by mobile devices. Then we simply add a class to this paragraph of visible extra small. And then let's make this text bold so it stands out. Okay, so if I refresh, you can see that it's visible at the extra small side. But once we get up to something like a tablet, it's gone. And anything larger than that, it will also not appear. So you can use the visible helper class and then a size when you only want something to display for a single size. And I'm sure once you do a bit of brainstorming, you'll be able to think of all kinds of neat scenarios where these helper classes are immensely useful. Perhaps you only want to display a certain image at a certain size or certain headers at certain sizes. Uh, and you can do all of that with these utility classes very easily. Really quickly, I will mention that you don't want to overuse these utility classes of visible and hidden. For example, if there's content that just doesn't work at certain sizes, feel free to use these classes. But otherwise, you might want to think about, well, how can I restyle content to work for all sizes? Or if you want to exclude something at the mobile level and it's a file size concern, perhaps you want to look into a JavaScript solution to not even load the content at all unless it's a larger screen. So I guess that's my way of saying that these utility classes are very useful and they definitely have their purpose. But the old saying goes, if the only tool you have is a hammer, everything starts to look like a nail. Having said that, there's no right or wrong way to approach responsive web design. Everyone's got their own approach. And what we've learned today are the foundation, the building blocks. So we've learned how to set up columns. We learned how to set up a responsive navigation. And we learned how to show and hide certain content at certain sizes. So that's a general introduction to how to create responsive layouts with Bootstrap. I hope you feel like you learned something. Thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for more web development tutorials. Thanks. Bye.